With myriad mobile game cheat tools and emulators being available in digital space, mobile game hacking has become a menace. Using cheat tools, hackers easily bypass payment gateways and manipulate the game data. In the next panel discussion, industry experts will discuss and deliberate on outsourced security solutions or build internally, securing real money gaming. I would like to invite Anirban Roy Chaudhary, Assistant Editor, Special Initiatives, etbrandequity.com, to moderate this session. Over to you, Anirban. Thanks a lot, Annie, for the introduction. Real money gaming in India is gradually becoming a full-time profession. No kidding, I am right. Many people have already started practicing and coaching for the games. One of the most popular real money sport across the globe is poker. The five-card game has grown leaps and bounds in India too. Players like Daniel Negrano, Phil Av are growing their fan base in India. Their t-shirts are being worn and walked around on the streets of the country. Aspiring pro poker players are enrolling themselves to coaching classes to be able to calculate the odds better. It is not just one roll of a dice or just one hand. You are bluffing. Much of this revolution is being driven by tech-based platforms who are gradually rolling out on the ground even as well. Dear attendees, today we have with us heads of three largest organizations in the ecosystem and they need no further introduction. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ankur, Shiv and Navkiran for joining me. Uh, what I like to start with is an icebreaker. So it's sort of a question that I would like to, you know, each one of you to briefly answer. Uh, what is it that, uh, you know, that impacted the most to each one of you when it's when we are talking about the poker scene of the country, the one change that has excited you the most? We'll start with you, Navkiran. Thank you. Uh... I mean, I think the first and foremost change that we've seen is the increased acceptance. Slowly and gradually, people are getting over the notion that poker is a game of luck. And, you know, with all these tournaments taking place at national and international level, the sport has started, you know, discovering new talent. Uh, and people have also started realizing that poker is truly a sport, you know, because, you know, the difference between a game and a sport is the element of glory. Today, you can name so many poker players. You started your introduction also with a couple of very famous poker players. Correct. So people have also started realizing that poker is a you know true sport. And I think something that I've seen personally in the last seven, eight years is also the increased participation of women in the poker ecosystem. I mean, in the initial days, uh, when we launched the platform, there were hardly like 1% to 1.5% of female players out of the 100% pool. And we've seen that gradually grow to about seven and a half to 10%. And that's also something that's really exciting. And I think it's also the increased acceptance of technology across uh, all online gaming platforms. And they're all, you know, all of us are working on making sure that people also learn the game as they right. play, since it is a very sophisticated, you know, sport. So Good. these are the things that have excited me the most in the last few years. Great, great. Thank you. And thank you for subtly telling me that I have not named any of the women champion, be it Maria Ho or Victoria Corin. They're fantastic. Uh, Ankur, we'll move to you now. Uh, what what excited you the most, the one change in the poker scene? I think the I think of all the things that have happened, and it's tough to say just one, right? Because these yeah. things are never one. They're never singular. It's a culmination of things that have happened over time. And then there's never like one inflection point. Uh, right. But I think... Apart from what Navkiran has already mentioned, right? Just female players, acceptance, etc. I think just what I'm excited about is that gaming is no longer a, a pastime activity. I think gaming is today as mainstream as it gets, as a job, as a profession, as something you could focus on as a career. I think for me, that as a theme is a lot more exciting. Now, in gaming, yes, obviously, poker is one of the games that we represent today. Uh, and, and I love the game. I've been playing it for the last 15, 17 years. But I think... Of all the things that I've seen, I think people's understanding of poker, like Navi also said, is that it's it's not a game that is kind of primarily based on luck or chance and that it's skill. And being able to understand what that skill is, and it's so similar to so many other things that require skill, be it stock trading, be it you know other sports, etc. So I think that comparison, that understanding and putting us in that platform is what I'm most excited about. Great. Great. Shiv, your take on this? 
I think from the consumer side and the game as such, acceptance, both Navi and Ankur have covered it. What I have seen over the last two, two and a half years since I joined this particular uh, gaming industry, I have seen talent accepting this industry to come and work. When I say talent, earlier, if you, if you really look at what has happened in the RMG ecosystem, there have been great brains who started it. But but great talent acceptance, marquee pedigree talent acceptance coming and joining. That's what I have seen over the last two and a half years since I came on board here. And also, up, I, I believe pandemic was a, was a push, which which I, it was, an, was a singular event as far as I'm concerned. The way I look at it gave push to skill-based real money gaming, poker in, in, in particular, wherein consumers accepted it. They looked at it as, an, it as a real alternate for any other entertainment, whether it is content viewing or binge watching, poker and other, other real money games came on as a large contender to the regular entertainment. If you really look at internationally, I think gaming has already surpassed the combined size of both movie and music industry, right? Absolutely. So that's how I look at it. And this, this coming of age is only the beginning for, for this industry, according to me. Mm-hmm. Wherein talent, consumer acceptance, consumer traction, and pedigree talent coming to make it large. That's the combination which is more, very, very exciting now. Great. Great. Staying with you, Shiv, uh, how will you explain where poker is in industry you know, stands today in India. COVID came in as a boom, as we, as many of you mentioned. Uh, you know, but what what has it done to poker in particular? I think we have not even scratched the surface. Okay. Potential of poker as a game, from a user traction, from a consumer traction, from a business traction itself, as well, right? So, if you ask me, standing here, where will it go? I think. 20-fold, 30-fold, mm-hmm. it will go in next 10 years or 15 years, right? The time, I don't think I am I'm, 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 I'm qualified enough to put a time there, right? Mm-hmm. Look, at, look at what is poker. Poker is globally the most accepted skill-based card game in the, in the world. Correct. It is the most celebrated game as far as the players are concerned, as far as success, is, success of a player is concerned. If, if you add this, and in India, I think the last count, somebody told me that it is, a th- it is somewhere around 1,000, 1,100 crore market size, all, all put together, right? Offline, online, put together. I'm talking about the organized segment, right? Yeah. The total gaming industry is around 20, 23,000 crores. Correct. Right? It is hardly 5% of it. Yeah. I think... I think it, it it's and and the overall gaming industry is going to go up to sixty thousand crores, seventy thousand crores, whatever numbers analysts or anybody throws off in next five to six years. Poker itself is is predicted to go to three thousand five hundred crores. I believe it will uh, as the as the market matures. Most of the players with what poker attracts are the younger generation. Let's put it this way: this is a this is a game which every aspirant. Every college student who is aspiring to go abroad and study wants to learn because okay. this is an icebreaker in the hostels, in the university dorms, across the world. And it is it is today also the scenario in Indian universities. For example, IITs, IM, IMs, people, study, people go there and poker becomes their, their, their choice of game. Right? It is slowly getting into the pop culture. Now, can you can you put a ceiling to it? Where will it go? I don't think I can I, I can put it. I can only say 10 to 5, 15 X is, is my imagination where it will go from today. So that's right. where we are, we are looking at a 2 billion industry in, in, in next 7 to 8 years, if I were to look at 15 times. Right. So 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 that that actually is also is also what excites all three of us and and rest of the aspirant players who are trying to build a poker platform across the country, right? Mm-hmm. Correct. Correct. Now, Kiran, your, uh, you know, if, if you were to give us a give us an overview from a macro point of view on poker. I mean, uh, I'll actually talk about how sports have become big, right, in the last yeah. 30, 40 years. If you see cricket became big once India be, like won the World Cup before 83, uh, cricket wasn't as big as it is now, right? Mm. Uh, I mean, no one knew about javelin throw. Uh, suddenly, people are raving about javelin throw after Neera Chopra won the Olympic gold. 
correct so in poker as well uh, i think poker is positioned as such that you could see that inflection point in the next 6 month or one year because now when you see the skill level of the poker players traveling abroad and playing these tournaments it's really up there you see them you know at the final tables you said see them winning medals so mm-hmm. once they start winning the you know the right i mean say they win couple of world series of poker events now i think suddenly you will see that inflection point in the game itself and poker you know unlike other card games is well positioned for it to grow because you don't see these international events for all other card games today poker's played internationally in las vegas in europe there is an event happening in cambodia right now so yeah. you know so it's just a matter of time i feel and like shiv said you know it's taught in college should be taught in colleges and it is you know it's such a good life skill to have as well mm-hmm. and in fact the other day i was reading this book called thinking in bets where they said life is a game of poker and not a game of chess because you don't know all the variables when you're making these decisions so yeah. you know so more of these books will come out and more of these life skills will grow so that will eventually grow poker as well in india correct ankur coming to you as as navkiran mentioned you know cricket was not that big javelin throw was not that big before the olympic gold but where is the kapil dev or the neeraj chopra or you know mirabai chanu moment going to come is it, is it going to be from some of the existing players who are already seeing in the uh, in in the ecosystem or is it going to be you know new players coming out say for example an iit bombay guy comes out and rocks the poker scene and then others starts following him and being aspirational where will the aspiration come from so i kind of have like a little agreement and disagreement with both uh, mm-hmm. shiv said that it's a game that you know young people kind of learn which is true majority uh, young guys will kind of learn it before the other guys but in the past few years i've played with people that are well in their 50s and have picked up poker the mm-hmm. thing is and and this is the great thing about poker right it's a game of complete equalizer you could be any gender any sex any age you could whatever background you could be a doctor you could be an iit guy and i could be someone who's just in college but yeah. at the poker table we're all one and at that point uh, what kicks in is actually your gut your ability to pick up on reads tell skills all of that but i think coming to your point about when will that come it's it's tough to tell uh, for the last few years i've been dreaming it comes asap because you don't know when it could come the good thing and and i think the interesting factor is that of the total participation and if you look at the indian percentage of people that are participating in these live events right which mm-hmm. today is in single low digits but despite that those single low digit guys are converting a lot more in the money percentages if 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 i could sort of put it in poker terms which means that if i'm participating how often will i come in the top 15% of the field okay. so imagine if there are 5000 6000 players playing and only 50 70 80 you know indians are participating a decent percentage of those indians are actually coming in the top 10% which tells you that if you put the entire field at par indians are actually above average uh, at the least if not much better mm-hmm. so i think that if india sort of had the ability to contribute way more poker players assume that at a 5000 player field a thousand of them were indians then i'm sure that that moment would be never before another support you know needs to come from from tech and and all three of you are uh, you know delivering your product through technology so would like to know from you i mean uh, what has been your approach towards tech uh, do you believe there is merit in long term uh, if you build a strong tech background internally or is it is it be, is it best to leave it you know for the intelligent mind somewhere else to keep it secure navkira any game in fact online basically you art meets science right when I mean, mm. you're building games right? i mean it's the most interactive way of consuming content so it is about technology it is about the experience that you can create so i think technology obviously has to be the front runner in fact uh, i mean in, even when you look at the composition of teams i think 50% of our workforce is product and tech yeah. and it is about building the right experience making sure there are less friction points in that journey so uh, of course for a consumer it's a game but for us uh, we are a technology company to be honest it's trying to solve that problem of giving a better experience than you know rest of the competition or just generally improving the level of experience for consumers okay okay great uh, shiv your take on this i think we are in so let's let's, let's look at we are we are fundamentally in consumer internet business in yeah. con- in consumer internet business your ability to own consumers can only be possible or can get only 
uh, exponentially better if you own technology and product. Okay. The companies who make big across the world in consumer, I'm, I'm not just talking about gaming. So across the, across the world, the companies who are consumer facing in the internet space own their tech and product. Because as, as, as Navi also explained, that's the only way you can, you can give your consumers experience, a superior experience or a differentiated experience. Right? Uh, it is not yet matured enough for us to say that, can I, can I outsource my product? Can I outsource my, some part of development could always be outsourced to, to some partner, but the core technology and the product has to be owned by a, I mean, this is, this is my firm belief to be a winner in this game. You have to own it, right? Okay. Now you can you can time to time to shrink time to market. You can go out, get it developed, bring it in. That's a, that's a different strategy, right? Mm-hmm. But you have to be there where the uh, you, for you to deliver what the consumer wants. Mm-hmm. You need to own the technology piece in consumer. In the in the gaming world, the there could be a small difference between because your gameplay or the main area. If if you are if you are if you are running a multi-gaming platform probably some of these games need not necessarily be built by you Hmm. right so those games could be outsourced or could be plugged in from from a third-party developer but otherwise your ui ux your product has to be owned by you okay okay that's great thanks for simplifying it uh ankur your take on this do you do you see merit in building a strong tech backend or or would you rather have a uh you know secure outsource platform handle it I think so. My answer is a little, uh, I mean, it's similar, but a little biased because mm-hmm. as a product company where our product is built centrally and then sort of every country gets uh, some bit of changes as it needs. Having right. said that, it has to be something that you have to have complete control over. And the thing is with real money games, right? And it doesn't matter what kind of a business you're in generally irrespective, but in real money games, uh, trust is sort of paramount to the success of the business and to bring in that trust safety and security have to be sort of considered at the very sort of topmost as a priority. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be able to do that, you have to have complete control over how you build these things, what sort of efforts and investments you put into the sort of, you know, the systems at the back end to be able to capture some of the, I would say, possible, uh, you know, impact of negative use of people trying to collude and all of those things. So there's a lot of things that can go wrong in general with technology, but with real money gaming, you've got to be extra secure. So whereas, I mean, I think Pokestars is probably one of the, uh, you know, one of the first guys in the business back in 2000, early 2000s to have invested heavily on the product from a security and safety perspective and has won tons of awards globally. So I think right. to be able to do that, first you have to have complete control over the product. And then you've got to know the levers that are kind of going to affect both the business and the consumer. Um, and again, if you can sort of make sure that trust is well-rounded. Uh, then everything else becomes a lot easier. You know, the animations, etc., is a, a lot more easier to do. But uh, building that trust layer is, is, I think, above all. Correct. Great. You you mentioned uh, animation, and that brings me to my next question. Uh, Nafkiran would like to know from you. You know, how important is the gameplay and and in the, the way the table looks, the way the card you know folds from uh, the, from a green table might be great for everybody, but might not be. I might want a red one. So you know. What's, what's your sense of it? And India is still very much a mobile first uh, market from what I read from the reports, even for poker, though coaches say they played upright on your desktop, but hardly anybody follows. So, you know, is, is it challenging, more challenging for India to get the interface right because it's mobile first? Uh, I think there are certain challenges since, uh, I mean, most devices uh, are under sub 10K in India. Mm-hmm. So you have to maintain that 60 FPS. Uh, on even those devices. So that is one of the biggest challenges. But when you talk about UI, I mean, you coming back to your previous question, that yeah. is one of the reasons why you need to own your technology as you, you need to personalize experiences based on regions, based on demographics, all of that, you know, right now is the age of hyper personalization and recommendation. So uh, every like user wants a unique experience as well. So mm-hmm. basis of that basis of that cohort, you need to personalize that experience. And I think Designing is one thing, but making sure that you're able to run those animations at 60 FPS on, you know, lower end phones, making sure that uh, the battery doesn't get drained. I think those are more critical challenges. And for that, you need a very sophisticated backend, right? Mm-hmm. To solve that. And I think that is a struggle. I'm sure all of us have been, you know, doing, and we will continue to do as well as we evolve. 
you know technology right. will keep evolving and our products also have to keep evolving with that correct and and data is also getting better i mean exactly. as poker go deeper it is does it become more challenging because you have to deal with even lower bandwidth i i think uh, there are uh, when you say data i think there are two forms of data right i mean when you yeah. talk about bandwidth i think they will all, all, only improve over time you have you correct. know the era of 5g now uh, i think what we're now actually starting to realize is the more data and as our product is getting more mature and we're seeing more data our algorithms are are getting more refined it's like wine right more data gets you more you know things to do better insights yeah. and yeah. because of that we are able to build much better personalized experience than before in fact a lot of our product is super hyper personalized uh, all of us here if you open up boga bagi product would see a different layout different screen all together and it would evolve with what you're doing on the product like right. keep interacting with it great great we'll get back to it you know it's very interesting what you mentioned and i'm noted it will 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 get back to this part of the discussion very soon uh, ship from you i'd like to know i mean how do you build this uh, entire phenomenon of retention and and what is the consumer behavior when it comes to poker do they hop platforms uh, if there's a big tournament say in another one will i easily go there and then if i like the interface there i may stick there lose and then you lose the you lose the customer so what what's the what's the consumer behavior say uh, predominantly this business as i understand is a, is, is a is a game of retention hmm. right? because as the player matures in the platform that's when he starts spending more time and probably giving us more rake right or arc as we call Correct. it so it is a retention game unlike any other business because uh, if if you were to compare it with e-commerce then then probably the probability of first transaction itself being big in e-commerce there is a probability but here it's it's very very unlikely that a consumer unless he knows the game very well uh-huh. he comes in and he is very confident he might be betting more he might be investing more but you know Uh, otherwise it's, it's it's a predominantly retention game it's it's a, it's a long haul retention game what happens right yeah. from a consumer behavior perspective broadly we classify consumers in two segments one is the cash game the other one is the pure tournament game okay i think i would like to believe cash game players have more loyalty because tournament players would would try to play on multiple platforms because and multiple tournaments mm-hmm. right and is that essentially i mean i i think it's 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 part and parcel of the business people would like to go and play tournaments across the platforms and uh, and then then display their skills and win money right hmm. now on the cash game side of it more or less what we see on our platform is there is at least up to 70 80% 90% of the players have loyalty because it's okay. just like see just like any other internet businesses it becomes a habit we are internet is is a form of media it becomes habit and uh, people are able to navigate more uh, freely and better if they have spent more time correct right as long as the platform is trustworthy i think ankur ankur definitely touched the core of our business right the trust infrastructure what a platform provides hmm. right now as long as the platform is able to provide that where consumers where the gamers feel confident about this platform and trust the platform the hopping will not happen much on the cash games tournament pure tournament players they are tournament players they need uh-huh. to go where where there are big prizes or or they would like to play on multiple platforms that's how i would look at uh, right so okay. trust is one right the, the 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 second element is how smooth is the interaction which i think we all covered in the in the tech and product part correct. It, right correct. so that's the experience level that's correct. how I... great great ankur i would like to know from you i mean at this halfway mark uh, there are many entrepreneurs as well who are probably following this conversation and they too might have this ambition of launching their own poker product sometime soon uh, what is your suggestion for them i mean like when you were starting up you you throw up a lot of discounts and that and you know bonuses deposit bonus and that gets new people into the uh, in, into the platform there's a cost of acquisition you know associated to it but in the long run what are the factors that drive the trust yeah so i mean uh, i might have a non popular view on that uh, i'm not a fan of uh, discounting heavy discounting to buy market share because eventually that's not what people will stick with you for uh, they might try you out for that but that's not what they stick with you for 
I think they stick with you because they have again trust most important, uh, and they like the experience. Like Navi said, right? How far and how deep can I make that experience personalized? Uh, also, right. because we're not necessarily competing against games. We're now competing against the YouTubes and everything else in the world. Where for me as a consumer, it's about finding entertainment. My entertainment can come from YouTube, OTT, whatever it is that I'm spending in a day. So right. if I have to then spend time on one platform for gaming. that too with real money involved where i know that there is a chance that you know i could win or i could lose uh so there's so many factors and things to tick off right so trust for me will always remain at the top most and with that i think if you can build a great story around education as well so people coming in understand that look this isn't something where you will get rich quick that could happen and that's maybe a one off but that's not the story to sell uh, yeah. i think what you need to tell people is if you really like poker and i love poker i'm a passionate poker player it's because after you kind of get in and you go through your swings of ups and downs you realize that the intricacies of the games that you interact with right from reading people of of being able to tell that okay my gut was right but the gut is nothing but a sort of you know a internal mathematic calculation that you've done saying okay the last time person did this hence is this i think those are the exciting moments of poker that keep your journey sort of treading along so for, i think for me it's now figuring out how do i make sure people understand that well early into their journey rather than the discounts and the bonuses so that they understand that look this is what you should expect from poker and if you are made for this and if these things excite you then you're going to have a great time with this game but if you're expecting that one night may I'll become a millionaire or if you think great bonus and hence I'm playing then you probably be one of those casual players or the people that come and try a new game and then drop off and that's fine you know people kind of find their own way around it uh, but i would really love to tell sort of that deep truth and sort of the long story of poker in that initial moment is possible it's tough to do uh, because obviously people are attracted to the game for a very different reason mm. uh, but yeah, i hope there's a way for us to be able to communicate that well yeah i'm sure i'm sure like history is proof of the fact that many occasional millionaires or millionaires by chance have gone broke really fast even in india we yeah. have such examples yeah yeah uh, yeah enough kiran we mentioned about tournaments you know as players mature they become more tournament focused uh, in india our tourneys uh, you know where you announce million, million surprise uh, in in terms of uh, you know awards and money these are cash money that they, that you that you give to winners uh, is it an economically profitable proposition at this point in time the tournament business or is it that tournament gets new players who then play cash and you get the rake out of it and does it makes overall business sense i mean like ankur said uh, even us like we've never believed in discounting right mm. so Uh, whatever we do is about the experience and making sure that players when they come on the platform they stick because of the experience and not the discounting or the overlays that you would face in any of the tournaments as an operator right. uh, so i think how i look at uh, these different formats in poker is you know everyone has their own preference it's not like when a player gets mature he plays tournaments it's just you know how some of us like to watch documentaries some of us like to uh, consume web series or some movies so inside poker also there are these different formats and different players like to consume different formats mm. right so uh, when i look at these different format cash game tournaments multiple formats inside tournaments or multiple variations of cash games i look at them as a you know form of content and everyone is you know catered according to their preferences mm -hmm. so someone who is engaging in tournaments will obviously you know have a journey based uh, personalized on the tournament journey basis he'll get communication accordingly and when we look at tournaments obviously there is a buzz because there are uh, you know very high prizes that are guaranteed and Correct. definitely there is a buzz whenever there is a tournament series going on uh, but like ankur also mentioned it's not something that makes the users stick right the the thing that makes the user stick is the experience yeah. right and not exactly the offering sometimes in terms of bonusing or higher uh, tournament series uh mm -hmm. great great chief your your take on uh, the fact that how do we make tournaments bigger in india you know do do you need to complement the existing online tournaments with more and more offline tournaments uh, how have we progressed in, in in as a country in terms of tournaments i think offline leg for a tournament definitely helps anybody who plays poker here would would would, would appreciate this fact or would accept this fact that the offline leg provides an experience which 
probably online can never fill it unlike any other industry this is a this is at the end of the day this is this is this is also a part of entertainment industry right correct so your ability when when you go offline your ability to interact with players and get entertained is as far superior can is is that the only way to make tournaments big i don't know i i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm not a big uh, i'm not uh, i will not be able to answer with an affirmative that only offline like will help to make yeah. the tournament okay amplification of tournaments in the consumer's mind is directly proportionate to the price money if there is an online platform which comes and says 100 crore here win i think nobody can beat that no offline business can beat that. right so 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 uh, but what we have seen in fact we we have that strength of having having one of the greatest offline uh, uh, ship or uh, in in goa because because of our uh, lineage our, our parent is is the largest casino group in the country by virtue of that we do have uh, our offline uh, presence and and our tournaments every every quarter on quarter we do have an offline leg of it and what we see is a great amount of stickiness okay. of our tournament players right okay but is that the only leg i think price money cannot be it's, it's it's like it's like i i keep telling if if kbc kbc happened became kbc because it was one crore unheard of price price amount right so that's yeah. what is going to make the tournament if if anybody can bet on a uh, bet on a tournament which has 50 crore 50 crore 100 crore price i think yes <laughs> that's when tournament poker tournaments will will will, will become extremely big right yeah. but i don't think the industry is there to have that kind of price amount at this point in time it would take at least another 3 to 4 years where we start seeing lot of players coming a lot of recreational gamers coming and playing poker right so when the when the universe goes today today i think if 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 you are talking about pure numbers probably regular regular poker players could be in the tune of 3 lakhs to 5 lakh i mean i'm not sure mm. i mean give or take another another 20 25% i think we have to as a country poker regular players have to cross 50 at least 5 mil and that's when we would start seeing huge jackpots coming in and tournaments begin okay so it's the number that will drive the jackpots you are yeah. saying thank you shiv uh, ankur would like to know from you i mean like uh, you know in the past we saw axn in india telecast poker tournaments and at, at one point in time and we would see the final table and the excitement around it uh, there are globally there are examples where th- thousands get into an arena buy tickets and get into an arena to see the phil ivy versus daniel negreanu at the final table you know and these are moments then televised or you know even streamed through various platforms and the amplification does is magnanimous uh, are such models being evaluated in india are you talking to broadcasters to have one of your poker tournaments be on television say linear television sports television we recently had pubg on television i mean battleground i must say bgmi there was a tournament that happened on television i remember in the past there was a poker league as well which went to a uh, which went to a sportscaster so are are those amplifications the need of the art to make it as you said educating the youth taking it deeper into the country uh so we ourselves have actually done the global poker league which is a, a global league yeah. uh, in india ourselves and it, that's broadcasted on tv hmm. i i don't know whether it's the need of the hour again i don't think it's one thing it's one of the things okay. that again all platforms should try and deploy because uh, you know you have to kind of get out there and make as much noise as you can from an awareness standpoint the interesting thing that we found is that when we did this on tv it was about 2019 yeah. and uh, interestingly in 2019 feb is when the try had some new regulation there was almost like a uh, like the great cable cut moment that happened in india you know and we saw a lot of people just move from tv to ott and yeah. just digital consumption in general so i think at, at a high level i think yes it's important to do all of these things right do offline tournaments uh, broadcast them on ott on tv wherever you can obviously not you can't do everything just given budgets etc you know uh, not everyone has you know the crores or rupees uh, like cricket guys do to be able to put ourselves out there that often it would be nice uh, but we don't but given what we have i think we are all trying to do the max we can uh, by either partnering with an ott platform or doing these offline events and kind of getting out there so it's definitely great and it helps sort of poker become a lot more mainstream uh, right. and i'm sure that you know over the next couple of years is only going to get better we've now literally i think when we launched uh, in india we were the first brand to do a poker tvc pokersas but before that right that was 2019 uh, 
But before that, I had spent personally four years going door to door of all the different broadcasters saying, "Sir, please, amare saath ek add kar lo," and they wouldn't do it because it was still too early. Uh, I remember meeting the then uh, head of Viacom, and he said, "There's just no way I can do it." But it took all of that time, you know, to getting it to that level where in 2019 the first poker TV series could boss. happen. So after that, we were in Big Boss, then we got uh, Dhoni. But we had Nawaz who was the first guy because everybody right. else said no. They said we wouldn't do it. And obviously, Nawaz was great enough to say yes, and we got him to do that first ad. But I'm saying that that was the first step. Then there was another, and then obviously, I think Adda did an ad, and then the Bazi guys have recently done a great ad. So I think there's been like a few steps that have now been taken for it to kind of get to a point where. It's now no longer a question that can we do it. Now it's just a function of how and when and how much can we do. Uh, and as the ecosystem grows in general, I think all of our efforts will continue to kind of you know boost uh, poker sort of more and more from here. So yeah, it's it's definitely something I think is required. Um, and yeah, we're only going to help. Great. We are at the last segment, and we'll take concluding remarks from all of you. But before that, for the for our for the benefits of our viewers, uh, as as. Uh, Ankur mentioned the TRAI, the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. They had rolled out the new tariff order (NTO), which he was talking about in 2019. Uh, the question that I would like to end with, you know, uh, ha- have we proved as an industry that online poker is free from frauds, uh, and and that in the environment that a player is trusting his money with, which is hard earned, and we are talking about, uh, you know, propensity to pay player coming and say depositing in a million and not just a thousand or a few thousand. Have we reached a point we have where there are proof of concepts to say that you know this is safe? There are not bots calculating the odds against you. Yeah, Anup Kiran, you can start. I mean, uh, obviously, this is not a new industry for us. I mean, uh, we've been there for the last seven, eight years now, uh, and the other guys have been much older. In fact, in the space, so of course, we've proved that you can trust us with your money. I yeah. think it's always a constant battle as well against fraudsters and trying to outsmart it. It will always remain, not just in uh, in gaming, but any consumer tech play. Correct. Uh, I think we, you know, there are very sophisticated third-party tools that you can integrate to really figure out frauds at each level. Uh, you know, like I mentioned in one of the questions as well, with more data, mm-hmm. our algorithms have become more refined, and yeah. they're able to really predict lots of stuff real time. we've been able to build a backend infra which you know detects any kind of fraudulent behavior within a matter of seconds as well uh, so i mean i think it's fair to say that people can trust online poker platforms now because it's not a new industry it's been there for 7 years you have a proven concept of trust here uh, there are multiple winners and right. as far as it goes i think all the tools that we've integrated all the tools that we've built internally are also getting mature with time yeah i think we will all agree that you know device tracking uh, ip behaviors all of that you know there is shield that is doing really well with uh, device intelligence a lot of that once you integrate it together uh, together is a very important word here because you need mm-hmm. to tackle fraud at all levels and not just one level and once yeah. you all integrate it all together you see uh, you know being able to predict fraud also at some times you know there are some users where you can also predict that they would commit fraud at some point okay. so you know once you get more data you will also get into predictive analysis and be able to you know become better with age it is like wine yeah right i mean Great. product which involve data are like wine literally Great, Shiv. Your your take on this? The more we mature, the better we will get. I see the way I would the way I look. There are, there are two levels of fraud in our business, right? Mm. Or in in any business, one consumer tending to or gamer tending to game the system by virtue of which which results into losses for some other player, right? Or gain for one player, right? The other the other element is at the operator level. we have been uh, more or less i mean i think we were one of the first one to start poker online poker in this country we are almost now 10 11 years in the system unlike any other industry have you seen any fraud case from operator coming out which has cheated the game we have not heard at least i have not heard correct me if i am wrong hmm. that proves that as an ecosystem of operators we don't have any fraudulent system or fraudulent practices right yeah. At least, at least that integrity is there amongst the operators. Now, now let's come to the second question of the gamers. Now, that's where, as an operator, 
we tend to always try to be on our toes to ensure that no player becomes a victim of another gamer's fraudulent yeah. now and that is a moving target and that's an evolving target it's just like if somebody says that and it's, it's, it's there's a saying that you know fraudulence will always be one step ahead of the cops right i mean so so that is where i think all our department from a tech point of view or systems point of view or third party tools perspective we keep on monitoring and getting them on board it to ensure that gamers have a extremely extremely free of fraud platform to play it yeah great great shape thanks ankur your your quick take on this we have just 3 minutes left on the clock sure um i think pokistan has been known globally and sort of has that dominant market share position now because one of the first things it tackled in its infancy days back in you know the early 2000s was kind of building that safety and trust layer and uh, even till date i know that our teams internally and globally as well are always focusing on what are the things we can do to kind of deploy predictive stuff around fraud uh, yeah. for sure and I, i think what you can't help again irrespective of what industry is what the forces externally will try and do uh because there's so much happening in fintech there's so much happening in general so there's a lot of those things that will happen and again this could be irrespective of what consumer tech platform it is uh gaming okay. is obviously not the only one and again you know our job is to make sure we keep fighting that to keep up players safe so yeah i mean that's something that we'll always keep like i said the utmost importance uh in our product food chain great staying with you ankur you know two word answer or three word answer at best uh the biggest excitement for you in the poker industry that you see today biggest excitement yeah uh growth acceptance and uh, just i would say overall uh, the width of the game i think the game is now spreading to a lot of people uh, across the country different demographic different age different uh, classes so yeah anything that you find worrisome worrisome yeah uh yeah we're not growing fast enough for me that's a worry for the longest time i thought we take over a lot of the other games and obviously it's a fun competition to have uh my worry is that that's not happening fast enough so our 83 moment needs to come fast yeah you come at a good ticket price ankur so it can't happen so soon navkiran yeah. your your take on on the excitement and the worry some moment that you spent i mean i think like i mentioned acceptance i think uh, people are starting to realize that life is a game of luck in mm-hmm. poker you hold your cards that's our campaign as well Uh, and then that that acceptance is now there in the indian masses to see uh i mean the worry would be someone not trying to focus on the learning bit of the game and trying to scale it too fast it is a more sophisticated game unlike others so you need to focus on learning and making uh you know focus on education of the game as well when you're building yeah. a platform so that's a worry but apart from it i think it all looks very exciting for me great are we investing enough in educating the people thanks great point navkiran shiv your your will end with I think growth. Growth. I see exponential growth for poker. Mm-hmm. The only excitement, uh, the only flip side of it is the the risk of of players considering it as game of luck rather than game of skill. It great. is. It requires great amount of practice. If, if you can only be lucky once, if you have to consistently, persistently play this game and 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 make a career out of it, I think you need to practice a lot. Yes. So growth, growth, growth. I think in India, poker is poised for growth. There's no denial about it. Great. Nobody said they are worried about the regulations, and that that makes sense that we didn't address regulation at all in this. So, 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 my 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 answer to regulation is uh, very very simple. Will consumers stop playing poker, irrespective of regulation being there or not there? Consumer will not. So poker will definitely win. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you very much, Ankur. Shiv and Navkiran for your time. It was indeed a pleasure to, to, talking to you, and it was a learning session for me. Just a quick disclaimer: we don't intend to, you know, promote uh, mindless poker gaming, which can get addictive. Uh, there are Daniel, people like Dan Harrington and all who wrote books after books after books to educate people on poker. Please read them before you get into the game. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Stay with us for this ET Gaming Summit. Thank you everyone for putting your points on the table your knowledge and insights are worth taking away let's learn more from the next discussion stay tuned everyone